Okay, welcome to my fest, everybody. Today we have uh, Dr. Mustafa Atiyah, who I will I'll ask him to introduce himself. I actually met him through Yasser, who himself is a dis disability advocate, and he introduced me to Mustafa, who lives and works in the UK, but is Egyptian originally. Um, and he's going to lead us through this session. I will share the slides. Uh, shall I share them right away, or do you want to introduce yourself first, and then I can share them? Yeah, I can introduce myself first, uh, then you can say that that's, this, this would be absolutely all right. Go ahead. So, um, hello everyone. Um, I hope that uh, you can hear me well and you can also see me well. Uh, my name is uh, Mustafa Atia, and I am, uh, yes, I'm first of all honored uh, to be here today. Thank you very much for uh, Dr. Maha for providing me with such an inspiring opportunity every time. And thanks as well very much for uh, Yasser who provided me with that, this, this um, uh, nice and fruitful. Uh, uh, connection, uh, fantastic. It seems like we are meeting people from uh, all over the world. Uh, some people saying good morning, others saying afternoons, others saying good evening. So that's that's all right. I am Mustafa. I am a disabled person uh, uh, who got a visual impairment. Um, I think my journey is long, but just to summarize it, I'm currently working as an international consultant. Uh, uh, yeah, it's hot in Egypt as well as Texas as well. Uh, so I am I am uh, Mustafa. I am uh, working as an international consultant for uh, disability inclusion. I have my MA and PhD from the University of Leeds, uh, UK, where I am currently residing. I'm residing between Egypt and the UK. I am currently leading a consultancy with the project called Equal Opportunity Social Development with the German uh, uh, GIZ. I'm sure that you all know. Um, like more more. Um, scenes and maybe stops uh, during like about my journey will come when we are like during the presentation so i'll not take long to introduce myself and yeah can i ask you a question before i share the slides yes, how please. are you how are you both listening to the chat and talking at the same time because that's remarkable yeah this is uh, this is one thing that we can talk about it's about inclusive design so it's about the softwares who talk to you sometimes you can sometimes you can't you feel uh, you feel blessed when you can listen to everything and and respond okay. to everything but sometimes it's very hard yeah okay thank you i, right, I, I will... disabled my my screen reader just to because the, when the chat is talking i can't hear the speaker well so yeah it, when everyone sends a message it's it's it, the screen reader just speaks it um immediately so we, we just uh, i disabled it just to, uh, to avoid yeah. the mis, mis, miscommunication yeah. so don't worry uh, we will read some of the stuff in the chat every now and then so that nobody misses because uh, it's difficult even for all of us sometimes to keep up with the chat anyway so, okay, your slides are on the screen right now. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for uh, sharing. And uh, anytime the one, uh, like if people doesn't hear quite well, if people would like to ask me questions or anything, please feel free. So I think the session today, we try to make it as interactive and as possible. And it's not like a lecture or anything. It's rather a discussion or a thoughts about how we think of disability how we think of disability rights, what are the most disability, how we arrive to the fact that we have barriers and we have removal of these barriers and maybe inclusion is important or maybe important. No, don't call them this and call disabled people is more reflecting to their demands. So I think when it comes to, it is the journey it is the journey that comes with lots of disabled people voices that are allowed their organizations who came together to say we are about us without the presentation. So nothing about us without us. Important slogan, evoluted from the disability movement in California, early of my twentieth uh, century, and in many people in UK and South. Africa, who came together to say thanks for everyone who are talking about us. Thanks for people who are advocating on our behalf. But now we would like to advocate on our behalf ourselves. Because basically it is. Um, Mustafa. Yeah, yeah. Your um, voice is breaking up. Maybe if you turn off your camera, the bandwidth will be better. Is that okay now? Is that okay now? Yes. That okay? And everyone else, please mute yourself because several people are unmuted and this is uh, giving us some feedback. But can you, can you hear me well now? Yes, I can hear much better now. Thank you. Okay. 
so it is it is about it's about nothing about us without us it is about that slogan who disabled people use to speak about their own demands and their own life but themselves because yes we all know think lots of good things about women but women are more able to express themselves and more able to speak about themselves and this is why we have something now called DPOs, like disabled people organizations, like organizations who are formed and, and, and structured by disabled people to ensure that this is decision-making process is with disabled people, is by this, run by disabled people. But before moving forward and before going to the presentation, it would be interesting for me if we can be divided into maybe three um, breakout sessions, breakout rooms, okay. and on each of the breakout rooms, um, and 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 in each of the breakout rooms, I would like you to answer one of my three questions, which I will be sharing now. Like, like maybe, um, uh, maybe um, a question is um, like like the first question that that we can share here in in the first breakout session is. What do we mean by disability? So when we think of disability, what do you mean by this? How that term sounds to you and how you can divide it? So this is the first room just to discuss. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Ma, for, uh, for the assistance. Uh, uh, so this is room one. What do we mean by disability? I mean that I don't need like a two, three lines definition. I need to hear a little bit from people. When they hear disability, when they hear disabled people, what the first thing comes to, to, to their mind. The second room, I would like them to discuss a little bit more about terminologies. We have tons of terminologies used when it comes to disability. Some people saying that will hem them, some people saying special needs, some people, sorry, I mean with that will hem like with determination, uh, special needs, uh, people who are challenging in their impairments, and some people say people with disability, and some people say disabled people. What is the right terminology and why? And, and so I need to know, in, in your opinion, what is the best terminology used to express disabled people? What is the best terminology that we can use to express disabled people and why? And what do you think of other terms as well? So this is, would be for room two about the best terminology. The third room, um, it would be fantastic if we can speak about everyone now talking about inclusion, but what are the benefits of inclusion? Yes, but the third room talking about the benefits of benefits of inclusion. What are the benefits of inclusion? When we call, we need to have an inclusive society, inclusive community, inclusive development. Why we say that? How we, as colleagues, as students, feel like if we have that person with us, our community would be more benefited. Not only from the right perspective, but maybe speak about the economy, speak about social status, speak about the idea of the community that helps each other and so on and so forth. So if we can for ask for maybe 10 to 12 minutes um, discussions within your groups um, and definitely we'll come back to chat and from your chat, we will definitely be able to start and, and go forward with our presentation. Thanks for sure. uh, your patience to listen to me talking All a right. lot and thank no you. Problem. So uh, I've created the breakout rooms with the numbers and the, and the questions in the title of the breakout room. So Christine Muskell, your room is the one when people find themselves with Christine, that's the one about what do we mean by disability? The terminology is used, that's the room that has Danielle, Linda, Ty, and Trail. And the benefits of inclusion is uh, Alia, Sean, and Steven. All right, I will send you for 11 minutes. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts, go on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and Laura, my colleague Laura is staying with us, Mustafa, because you and she are co-hosts. But if you would like to go to one of the rooms, just let me know which one you'd like to go to and I can send you there. Um, is that right? Introduction is an introduction so far for you? Yes, it's great, it's great. Do you want to join one of the breakout rooms and be part of that discussion? Yeah, or I do can you want just to listen. Uh, yeah. Because if you send me to one, I'm thinking how I can go to the others. Um, um, yeah, you, you can as, as a co-host, you should be able to go to any of them, but I don't know how that works on your machine. I'm going to pause the recording. Welcome back, everybody. So, uh, Welcome oh, back, everyone. Okay. Please mute yourself if you're not speaking here. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna mute everyone and then just, uh, yeah, okay. Welcome, I hope you, has, you all had a good, um, good time together in the breakout rooms. And I know that Mustafa was, was you know, passing around and, and seeing what y'all were talking about. Um, Mustafa, I just asked you to unmute because I muted everyone because there was noise from everywhere. People coming back from breakout rooms unmuted. Right. And now um, Perfect. Yeah. Go ahead. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. I heard lots of uh, nice insights. I was, uh, I have joined, um, I think, two, at least two of your rooms and um, just uh, would love to hear a little bit of a summary or maybe some thoughts or to share some of your ideas that have been discussed in the room. I will not comment on them now. I would afterwards start the presentation and then we can discuss afterwards. So if I can ask someone from room one to tell us about what do we mean by disability? Well, we kind of frame it, framed it into the way of context uh, that, that disability is placed, in which disability is placed. I mean, society, medical models, and uh, um, as well as uh, people, people themselves, how they view the disabled person and how the disabled person um, is, is being viewed uh, by their relatives and so on and so forth. And, uh, and this meaning reflected how disability is, is put in context in, 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 in response to the culture, in response to the place, and in response to mm. Uh, mm. The, the, the shared habits and shared traits between each other. Right. Very interesting. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, 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 any other uh, responses from room one? Or we can just go ahead and move to room two. Right. I always take the silence as a as a yeah as confirmation to move forward. So can we have someone from room two, please? I'll I'll talk a lot. Um, and y'all who are in there with me, please um, stop me if I misrepresent. So we were talking about terminology or language, and we we start off by um, thinking about like um, medical terms. Um, to refer as specific as you can to the issue. And then so he sort of said, oh yeah, that's different. Like if you're talking about the issue, the disability, the impairment itself, it might be people liked going for the medical terminology. And then if you're referring to uh, the people like disabled people, um, it's a more complicated uh, best practice. Um, and also considering context, like which mm -hmm. class you're teaching, um, I, per, this is my personal thing, and we talked a lot about also things are changing. Um, so you should really use the terminology that the disabled person prefers. Um, if you know that, and if you get it wrong, then apologize and fix it, just like pronouns. Um, and I think the, the good, one of the points was that the language keeps changing. And like, especially as we move from the medical model to the social model, to the cultural model, to like disability justice, then mm -hmm. your language changes a lot. And so um, that idea of being open to change and understanding it. Did I miss yeah. anything, guys? I think it's a good summary already to, uh, to, to thoughts and discussions. Um, shall we... Yeah, yeah, definitely great. Um, shall we move to room three? Well, I already shared in the chat a great phrase from Bonnie in our group about um, uh, making it possible for people, for everybody to show up in the fullness of themselves. And uh, a lot of what we were talking about in the inclusion group was about how this is part of a larger project of inclusion for students, for teachers going beyond the classroom. Uh, anyway, other people from three can chime in, but I thought it was a good discussion. Uh, yeah, we also mentioned, right, some of the broader benefits, right, is that it challenges it challenges us as teachers, administrators, uh, scholars, et cetera, challenges us to, to really look at our curriculum more deeply, more thoughtfully, and attempt to revise it, because we talked about the challenges of having 
you know, dozens of students and being able to respond to each individual student's needs. Um, so being able to revise our curriculum, being able to um, support students with peer advocacy, tutoring support, et cetera, and of course, other a plethora of other policies as well. Yes, and I'd also like to add to my teammates that it also uh, promotes uh, human development or growth because we're all working together collectively despite us having various needs, interests, skills, and so on and so forth. And uh, it also um, increases chances of, uh, as uh, Stephen mentioned, support, creates a supportive environment, especially, of course, if it also promotes peer support. Because as a teacher, if you have uh, several students who are disabled, for instance, it's going to be difficult for you to address each and every one of their needs. So if you create an environment that's a, that uh, promotes peer support, this could be both useful in terms of the educational context and as a life skill in general, too. OK, um, these are great um, thoughts because we we discussed different topics here. And I think um, your responses shows um, like touched upon different stages of the development of the disability models and where we started. So in the in the um, uh, next minutes, I would um, start. Uh, can we start screen sharing again, please? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, in this presentation, I thought to um, to first start speaking about some definitions, maybe commenting a little bit about the terminologies and the benefits of the, 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 why we should use that terminology and not the other. And maybe as well, the um, um, kind of the etiquette and the how and, and in what way we, we should deal with the people with disability uh, respectively in relation to their, um, um, the, yeah. So, um, the first one is about um, about about disability. If we can move forward, definitely, I should I should mention first that disability is an important science that includes lots of disciplines as well. So we have lots of universities. Uh, you can only have an MA or um, uh, maybe your undergraduate and in, in only in inclusive education, or maybe an early detection intervention. You can study issues about inclusive development and the uh, sustainable development goals and the convention of rights of persons with disabilities which is a convention that ratified by egypt and maybe other 119 countries in uh, 2008 came to not to bring new rights but rather to compile all rights brought into into uh, into other conventions together um, by disabled people themselves to say, we are here and these are our rights and we would like it to be embedded in national policies and maybe in local action plans. But how does that happen? The development of, of disability theories started, as Yasa mentioned when he is summarizing the group, with this idea of um, the individual model of disability. And if we move forward to the next slide, you would find kind of a, a table that I have divided to give you the impression of the policy impact of each model. So we have a policy impact if we use the impairment, which is different than the, uh, uh, sorry, the individual model of disability, which is different than the policy impact if we use the social model of disability. So can we, do we have that table now, Maha? Yeah, it's been there for a while. Oh, sorry about that. So, no I mean, I mean the, uh, the individual model of disability basically, is the model that focuses on that disability is the problem of Mustafa. So if Mustafa is visually impaired, it's his problem to be disabled. And therefore, if the country or the policy or the action plan would like to support him, what we are going to do is we'd like to fix Mustafa. We would like to make surgeries so his eyes can start to see, or maybe we can like lengthen his leg a bit, or maybe adding some artificial limbs to, to, to his. So we are thinking of the person. So if you have a million pounds and I'm asking you to uh, design a policy in the framework of this individual model, that means you would design lots of rehabilitation pro programs only at the person's side to, to provide surgeries, maybe to try to fix him, believing that the impairment is something could be fixed. 
but this is definitely wooden work and um there there are lots of challenges because definitely disability like the people's impairment on permanent if someone who is blind will still blind forever definitely we are not saying that surgery is not important we are not here uh, defending the medical approach of disability but what we are doing is saying that the individual slash medical approach of disability is something that shouldn't be work on its own that should work in a, a company with other mid models maybe approaches maybe theories to ensure that we as a community benefiting from the disabled person and that the disabled person benefit from the, com the community and they will be saying that a lot today because it's not about rights-based issue it's not about give him this because this is his right we if we looked at uh, like according to who it's like 10 to 15 percent from the whole community from each community is our disabled people and this percentage is always increased to maybe 20 percent in other communities, depending on how each community define impairment. And that 80% of those disabled people lives in poor countries. So 80% of the whole disabled people all over the world lives in, in poor country because they, we have an important correlation between disability and poverty. Yeah. So, so the individual model is important because we have lots of people saying we move to, from that model to the other. Yes, we would like to accompany models in an inclusive or a comprehensive manner to support uh, disabled people today, right? So definitely if we have the policy and the framework of a social model, that would be different because the budgets would be directed into the removal of barriers rather than... <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm just, uh, when I'm listening to the comments, I'm listening to, and listening and, and talking somehow uh, interrupted, so I do apologize about that. So moving, moving, moving to the next slide, we have impairment, we have um, um, like disability, we have, as we said, individual model, and we have also the social model. So we started by the individual model, as I said. Another model that we are currently trying to defend as well, is something called the charity model of disability. We can see in Ramadan, or we can see in, in, in lots of events where we are collecting donations to support disabled people. This is really important. This is really interesting because by these donations, you can build programs. But what's the, the risk in that is that these donations always give the other members of the community that those people require care. Those people are weak. Those people require support. Those people cannot work like us. All what we can do for them or to give them in cash or in kind support, which is something wouldn't help when we are calling about empowerment. How are you gonna empower a weak person? How are you gonna empower maybe an, um, like a person who cannot play his role? So this is the, the, the controversial issue when it comes to donation is that we always give money to people who are weak and we, we shouldn't want disabled people to be seen as weak, but rather an, an, um, a citizen with an equal, part, like equal partner within the community. So this individual tragedy, this charity approach of disability are the first sort of models that have been used before disabled people voices came out to speak about the rights and to speak about the, uh, uh, that we need to erase or to remove these approaches and change it uh, by social and maybe rights-based approach models as well. Moving forward, I'm trying to move uh, like within the, within the journey and each of these models and each of these uh, approaches go a theory in academia um, who uh, we have the traditional model of disability. This is why you call the individual and or chat a charitable model of disability the traditional model of disability. We moved then by disabled people and their organization to discover the this wouldn't sort it out. Because if you collect money today for disabled people, you wouldn't be able to collect the same amount of money tomorrow. So you, you lose the concept of sustainability. You wouldn't be able to provide five years project to support inclusive employment for disabled people because 
you may not be able to collect donations. So we need something more sustainable. We need disability budgets to be embedded within national budgets every year, like to ensure that their affairs are inclusive and sustainable and embedded within the, within the plan. This is why people thought, uh, or mean disabled people thought, that we, have, we need to have our rights more embedded, a social model, the removal of barriers, so that, that the problem is no, not only resides, within the person, but rather resides as well in the community. If I am a blind person lives in Egypt and maybe the same person with the same level of blind impairment lives in USA, we both have the same impairment, but we both do not have the same disability. We both do not have the same disability basically because of the level of reasonable accommodation provided to each of us. So what I'm doing now is that I'm differentiating between impairment and disability. Impairment is an issue that resides inside the person. I may have an impairment in my eye, in my ears, in my legs, in my any hands and any other limbs, but I may or may not have disability depends on the level of reasonable accommodation provided in that community. Someone would ask maybe, and I'm sure that you already discussed that last session about reasonable accommodation. And as a quick reminder, it's about, as we said, the accessible tools, equipments, either in the buildings or in the person, with the person as well, to ensure that he is able to access services equally. So if you went to a hospital, and this hospital doesn't have sign language interpretation, no, like if we have deaf colleagues, they wouldn't be able to receive services. Basically, we don't have sign language interpretation, right? If you are a blind person and you went to a restaurant and the restaurant does not include a braille menu, I wouldn't be able to enjoy reading the menu and select my food independently, basically, because the, this, this menu is not in braille. So this uh, is. I would, I would, sorry, I would just add that uh, all those mod, all those models um, uh, are there to to empower the point of inclusion, and to 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 really reflect the slogan "Nothing about us without us." So if if those uh, reasonable accommodations are absent within the context of society, the inclusion of the person may be really uh, hindered or, or or limited in in some way a little bit. And uh, sorry, and and uh, um, also for the for the uh, individual model, if we if we dealt with a person with the individual model at all at, at all times, like the person the, the the person and the society wouldn't be inclusive. Thus, the the the, the barrier would would be would increase. So uh, I just wanted to reflect this on our um, slogan, yeah. just to make that to make everything connected. Yeah, thank you very much, yes. Yeah, so. We said that the journey started by the individual medical approach, a charity approach, the approach that looks at the person, try to fix it. We moved then to buy disabled people voices when they came together in a disability movement to say that this is not enough. We need to have a vehicle to express our demands. We, we are disabled by our communities. We are impaired, yes, but we may be disabled or not, depending on the level of accessibility provided the community. And we need these things to be embedded within policies. So this is what, what we are calling about, we're speaking about here, social model of disability, speaking about rights-based approach. And as Yasser mentioned, all of those issues kind of came together as a pathway to inclusion. I will discuss more about inclusion and segregation, but I would like to have a moment stop and maybe to hear one or two questions that can guide our discussion or maybe um, opposing opinions or arguments or thoughts, and then we will continue. Just a moment of reflection, as we say, and then we continue um, our PowerPoint slides and everything. Okay. Great. Maybe someone will want to speak out loud. Just raise your hand. Uh, there are not that many of us, so it should be easy to comments or questions. Uh, it's Danielle here. I guess I could just make a quick comment. There is, I don't know if anyone has heard of Mia Mingus, 
uh, but she um, she has disabilities and she she spoke she speaks about access intimacy and I think it relates to the last slide if I understand it correctly where you can implement different types of accommodations for people you can reduce physical barriers but that doesn't mean that the social interactions with that person will make them feel fully accepted in the classroom uh, you know it might be easier for them to circulate around in the room but if you still have the the teacher or the students acting in ways that kind of exclude the person uh, limit their their uh, involvement, then there's still that issue that needs to be resolved. So that's if I understood the last slide. Danielle, Absolutely. do you mean like it could be a technical accommodation, but not an attitude? Yes, yes. Sorry, Mustafa, I interrupted no, you. No, no, thank you very much. Sorry, carry on. I was done. <laughs> yeah, any, any, other, um, any other questions or thoughts? Yeah, definitely I would comment, I would come to that comment because this is really important because each, um, each community or each, uh, uh, depending on what's available and depending on the budgets and accommodations available, people dealing with inclusion differently. Uh, when it comes to schools, for example, some people allocating uh, disabled children in a specific in a, in a specific classroom rather than mingling them within with other students and thinking of this as inclusion, which is which is which is not right. So we have different um, interpretations to the term inclusion, depending maybe on the culture, available budget, and how we understand the concept of inclusion and its benefits to the to communities. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Is access intimacy a positive thing or a negative thing? Um, um, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, from I, I, I thought the question was directed at me. Sorry if it wasn't. Um, it's it's not that it's good or bad. It's um, uh, an example to explain what it is. Is uh, you have a person in a wheelchair and someone decides to push that wheelchair because uh, oh that's it's in an inconvenient place for the able person. So you have breached the intimacy. Okay, you've breached the access intimacy, you've touched that person's wheelchair. So it's like physical assault. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we, we have lots of etiquettes when it comes to um, when it comes to how to deal and respect uh, um, um, people with different types of impairments. I mean, the issue here is that in some countries, we're starting the journey of inclusion. And it's, I always have a fear that if we insist being sensitive of each and every action, when it comes to inclusion, people wouldn't do anything. I, uh, this does not mean that we shouldn't follow some etiquettes and guidelines and being sensitive and respectful to disabled people. So for example, I have my colleague who always say like, I'm sitting in a wheelchair, please don't put bags in my wheelchair. I'm not, I, I will not carry your bag because, because it's not, it's not, uh, it's, it's not my job to carry your bag because you, you, you hang it uh, like I'm not hanger, yeah? You shouldn't do your stuff on my wheelchair and so on and so forth. You should speak to me before pushing my wheelchair rather than just push the wheelchair without asking me because I'm not, you know, I, uh, I have my own decision and, and opinion, but we are learning as long as we, we are raising the community awareness, these things will become uh, better step by step. Any reflections or questions? I had a comment. It seems like um, from, from the models, I'm sure you're gonna get to this next, right? That's probably why you paused right now, but the models that you've mentioned so far um, are able-bodied people centered. So it kind of exactly. really, not, they're not considering, yeah, the perspective of the disabled people. A lot of the time disabled people are, you know, assumed incompetent because they can't speak, for example, where that's absolutely not true, uh, for example. So I, I have a sinking feeling maybe that's what you're gonna say next. Yeah, I mean, thank you very much because, you know, the issue that disabled people uh, minorities, as we said, 10 to 15%, somehow, unfortunately, give the majority the right to control their own affairs and demands 
and maybe to decide for them as well and looking to them as they are limited capacities rather than an equal bodies, the unable bodies, an able-bodied person. Exactly as we look at, you know, the, the, the feminism and then we have the black feminism in that and so on and so forth. So it's, it's absolutely a, a problematic issue that put disabled people usually into the, uh, the into the like someone have to decide for them so moving moving next i mean i said before my questions i was speaking about that like that these models is important because these models going while these models are developing we have lots of debates where discussing segregation or inclusion are we is it better for disabled students to be segregated on a specific classroom or to be mainstreamed within no within like like I don't want to say normal classroom because we also normal. So and and that 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 raised lots of issues. People say do not mainstream disabled students in schools because school like normal school wouldn't be able to provide the necessary support. Just segregate them in blind healing impairment or maybe intellectual disability schools and then merge them within universities. As a person who studied in blind school, and maybe Yasser as well, and then went to university, I swear that it, this is really, really, well, this was really difficult for me because like when I went to university, my non-disabled colleague, colleagues always doesn't know how to deal with myself, whether they can guide me or they can just find, uh, show me the way, how they can guide me, whether they would help me, or I would be also their friends because that's a big difference. So this segregation always put us in a position like a, like a strange creatures, you know, like people doesn't know anything about our capabilities. I mean, despite the difficulties that we may face in inclusive education, I am in favor of that because this is the only way that wouldn't have this, the associated stigma uh, within community to be employed, to be educated, to be, um, um, where, like um, having your own business or studying with like we have lots of disabled people struggling to enter faculties, departments or universities only because it is it is up to the discretion of the deans to decide yes or no for them to access this department or not. This is definitely because before having laws and thanks for the Convention of Rights of People with Disability who necessitated these rights for us but we have lots of people who suffered um, uh, from, from this access only because of their, um, because of the, the, the decision that the, the deans say, oh, you are disabled, we do not have the necessary equipment for you, sorry, we will not be able to have you in this department. And though, I don't know the answer if you'd like to shed light here more on the barriers that, that facing uh, disabled students due to stigma or due to the segregated environment that we that we faced a lot before yes sir you're on mute if you were trying to talk you need to unmute yourself is is it clear right now yes it is all right um i i just would would, would say that um the point of exclusion education and exclusion from departments i i have experienced this myself unfortunately here in egypt this wasn't really um uh, really from from a long time ago um it, it's 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 that way of, of they feel that people with disabilities are totally different up to doing even the the, the simple things like eating like um, like um, uh, uh, writing assignments uh, um, uh, doing their um, uh, exams but they don't even acknowledge that disabled people have screen readers as well. So I was told in the Department of English at, the, at a specific university that, no, we will not be able to, to have you this, this year because you will not be able to take the exam as, as, as um, such like your, your other colleagues or peers. So um, 
uh, as well uh, in addition that people non disabled people will will be will not be able to cope with dealing with you because we deal with boards we deal with uh, some uh, slides and we deal with some powerpoint presentations that which you will not be able to, to, to engage with your colleagues. Therefore, you will not be able to really adapt and you will be segregated more. But this is not the correct, the correct context. No, I have my own alternative uh, tools by which I can adapt easily with each community and each um, society. Um, and, and this happens also in schools. Disabled people are put in blind schools and, and deaf people are put in, in deaf schools and mental, uh, mentally disabled people are also put in, 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 in different organizations um, without, without giving them the opportunity to be included with their, with their uh, yeah. non-sighted mm -hmm. people or their norm, normal people. I assume this and, is different in different countries, right? Uh, I mean, Mustafa, you did your graduate work in the UK and I think you were studying disability. Actually, so I, do, I, I do apologize because I was talking disconnected. And, and suddenly uh -huh. I got disconnected and I was thinking like, ah, Dr. Maha, but I don't hear you. So sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm listening to your question now. I was just saying, so Yasser was sharing about the experience here in Egypt of exclusion. And I was wondering with you, when you went to the UK to study, was that must have been different. And I'm sure yeah. in yeah. other countries I mean, I mean, and other resourced I mean the, institutions. The, the challenge is not about inclusion itself. The challenge is about the process of inclusion. So people saying that inclusion is bad, we don't have, we don't have the resources, so we're not many stream students. The challenge basically is about the process itself. So the University of Leeds conducted an assessment prior to me entering the university, provided me with the necessary support, such as uh, such as braille materials, screen reader softwares, and maybe personal assistance, and maybe periodical meetings with the equality. Um, service office within the university thus to ensure that I am receiving decent and inclusive education equivalent to everyone else, e definitely including exams. And I was studying disability and actually I was teaching as well. And even if I, when I am teaching, the, the, we, 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 we did lots of advocacy to ensure that the marking exams and the process of uh, marking students' assignments is also accessible for us. Because if you give me a hard copy, um, exam and ask me to sign it without personal assistant. Here it comes the challenge of uh, being not not the challenge of being visually impaired, but ch the challenge because of the lack of accommodation. So I would like to make sure that everyone here understand the difference between mm. being visually impaired, the level of impairment, and the level of disability. They are different. You could be totally blind but not disabled, and you could be you could be just low low vision. Like maybe you can see you can see good, but with low vision, but also you're still disabled because you do not have the enough accommodation and materials. And this is what we call, as I said, the social model of disability. That we are removing the barriers. You are, we are removing your disability, and regardless your impairments. When we, this is why actually the sustainable development goals now, as we all know, mentioned more than mentioned disability in more than 11 references within the 17 goals of SDGs. And what is more interesting, that these references has been mentioned not in one goal or not in two goals, but on each goal, because this is inclusivity. When you consider the intersectionality between disability and gender, for example, or the intersectionality between disability and elder people, we have definitely disabled women facing larger difficulties than disabled men because they have the stigma of being a woman in a community in some communities due to cultures and also the stigma of being disabled so they have double oppression or maybe triple oppression as well because they are maybe black or something like that so we need to think of these barriers together and and the way forward to um, think of removing of this barrier so that means you would look at the challenges facing people your colleagues in the classroom in a way to that no not because he's not disabled, he not because he's disabled, he wouldn't be able to do it, but rather because of the lack of accommodation and reasonable accommodation. So far, there's man, something yes, in the chat. Ahead. Could we, um, yes, Stephen please. Uh, was talking about, I don't know if he wants to say this himself, but talking about uh, particularly, I think, people with disabilities, people of color, 
who are even, you know, they have an invisible disability and not even have access to adequate health care to receive the right disability diagnosis. And also uh, disabled people of color, as you were saying, that intersectionality, they worry about the stigma in terms of equitable yeah. career opportunities. Dr. Maha, this is really interesting point because we, during COVID-19, we observed lots of disabled people worldwide witnessed lots of challenges and barriers to access similar same level of services as others. People with hidden impairments even find it more harder because, because the, their impairments may be not uh, reported as part of the disability statistics within the country. Maybe they are not counted as disabled. And even if they are counted as disabled, they are not dis receive an equivalent or a specialized support to deal with them in an accessible manner. Because if we think of, uh, for example, people who got um, um, autism, you need to have a specific uh, dental care um, to, to, to deal with him in relation to his type of impairment as well. So you are uh, treating him, but in accordance to his level of impairment. So people with hidden impairment uh, uh, and, and actually people between impairments. So I mean, those who are not blind, but low vision, facing more difficulties than people who are blind because they, they have weak services. And actually people with multiple impairments, people who are deaf blind, people who are blind and also autistic, for example. So definitely um, we have levels of barriers that differs from one impairment to other. People with physical impairments facing less barriers than those with mental and or intellectual impairments. So I agree, Stephen, uh, for, for that point. And this is why we have advocacy groups and um, NGOs who try their best to advocate, uh, we, as we as we always say, we have miles to go. Um, would you mind reading the next slide for me? Yeah, so I don't know which one is the next slide because okay. I'm confused you, about where you... we are now. Which one yeah. do you want me to talk about? Um, so I was, I was uh, there is a slide that talking about impairment um, uh, and disability, and what's the next one? Um, so, so which one we first have of all, now, we, got into, we got into the social model, and there yeah. was a quote, I think you were talking about that. And then there's the problems with the social model. Yes, Sorry. can we read that? Okay, let's do that one. Okay, so this one is the one that says individual experience being downplayed or impairment given insufficient attention. Is that the one you want? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, as, as I said at the beginning, and this is why I mentioned about the convention, is that the the despite all the regulations that talks about the social model of disability, the, the, the problem is that um, we are a liability and not an asset. Disabled people are still not being seen as um, an, equal, um, an equal citizen and therefore not being, um, not being observed. And people say, yeah, inclusion is important. Yes, we understand that we have to remove the barriers from in front of disabled people, but we still definitely um, the, these are still not in place. It's all about budgets. So as long as government allocating necessary budgets and consider um, um, consider adding and putting the rights into policies, nothing will change. Uh, can we move to the next one? This is WHO slide, the biopsychosocial model. Would you like me to read the quote or is this not the one you want? Mustafa, you're on mute. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. So we we have uh, we have the medical and all individual, and we have this uh, the traditional. We have the social model, and we have actually the. Bio. Can we read the quote, please, of that one by you? Psychosocial model of disability. That's sure. So it says disability is a complex phenomenon that's both a problem at the level of a person's body and a complex and primarily social phenomena. Disability is always an interaction between features of the person and features of the overall context in which the person lives. But some aspects of disability are almost entirely internal to the person, while yeah. another aspect is almost entirely external. In other words, both medical and social responses are appropriate to the problems associated with disability. We cannot wholly reject either kind of intervention. 
Yeah, so it's about completion between uh, between between the individual model that we have mentioned and the social model of disability. People call that always as well the the twin track approach. Is that um, is that we have to um, remove um, the barriers in front of um, in front of disabled people, but also equip disabled people with the necessary skills and capacities to ensure that they are be that they be able to rehabilitate. So, so rehabilitation is um, is an important factor here to ensure that disabled people are equipped with the necessary tools, maybe capacities, maybe um, training as well. Um, shall we move to um, to the slides uh, to to the exercises? Maha, we have two exercises at the end, I think. Can you hear me? Sorry, I, I was talking and I was muted. Sorry. So the um, uh, yeah, we have two exercises. Do you want people to do them in breakout rooms or yes, here? Yeah. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. um, if if people can do them in two breakout rooms and and come back. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna stop screen sharing for a second and copy the text of the first exercise into the chat so that it's easier for people to wait. First of all, let me put the link to the slides. So that people, if they prefer to look at the slides, but I'll also copy the text. And so you want them to do um, making two short lists of words or phrases used in relation to disability and uh, what it suggests about the nature of disability. They've, they've actually already been doing that in the chat. Uh, Mustafa talking about uh, okay. terms like differently able and handy capable and whether these are good terms or perceived yeah. negatively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think that it's better for us to discuss it here if, if people yeah, already... Yeah, I kind of, okay. what do you guys think? Yeah, because I think we've already sort of started and maybe right. folks That's can okay. talk yeah. about a couple of them out loud. Yeah, people are saying oh, okay. things so, so, I mean, so let's discuss it. So definitely nowadays we hear lots of um, lots of terminologies um, in, um, in Egypt and maybe in Dubai and many other countries, people say that will him um, in is that considered a negative one? Because I don't know what the Arabic terms are yeah, considered definitely. negative. I not. mean, definitely, um, we prefer the term people with disability, basically, because... Um, because How do you say that in Arabic? Al-Ashqas Dawa Al-I'aqa. Al-Ashqas Dawa Al-I'aqa, because... And not Al-Mu'aq. And not yeah, the me, and, uh, Yes, uh. exactly. I'll try to clarify that quickly. So Al-Ashqas Dawa Al-I'aqa is, is, is the one that we... that that disabled people called for, the one that documented within the Convention of Rights of People with Disability, the one that has been mentioned within the new disability law as well, which is people with disability. And we say people first because about it's about dignity. We don't need to say people to say those with disability, mm. we need people. And then, mm. as, we, as we mentioned earlier, their disabilities comes from, from their communities. So they would be disabled or not, depending on the level of accessibility mm. provided by the community. If we say, for example, the other terminologies are difficult, are very risky, because when you say special needs, I think all of us kind of a special needs. If you, are, mm. if you cannot see well, you will wear glasses. If you are a, bit, a little bit tall, you need you need a specific accommodation. If you are yeah. a little more intelligent than other, you need a little bit of consideration to your intelligence it's through um, materials and modules. So special needs. If you went to the government and say we need money for the special needs, you don't know how much billion pounds you you'll be taken because because all of us special needs and the termination that will hemem. I cannot say that will hemem at all. I cannot say people with determination because Taha Hussein he is. He is Taha Hussein not because he's blind, but because he is Taha Hussein. Ammar Sharia, he is Ammar Sharia, he is a great musician because he is he he got a talent in the music, not because he's blind. So we shouldn't link the term determination with the impairment. We should link mm. the termination to the person's ability to have a perseverance and success. His success is the reason behind his determination. But not everyone, not the one sitting in the the pavement begging in the street, the disabled person got determination. Where he got that determination from? Mm. So you cannot say that will him to everyone. We can say that will him only to those who got him, who got determination. Yeah, is that clear? So special mm. needs, that will him and uh, that will people with special abilities. 
we are not all disabled people have special abilities. Not all mm -hmm. of us. All of us as a citizen, as human beings, got special abilities. But why we would like to have it sympathetic? Because we don't want them to feel that they are weak, that they are bad, that they are like, like this, this level of sympathetic language. And we would rather would like to say that you have a special abilities. Definitely, you do not have a special ability if you, if you, except if you develop it, or maybe you have a special ability, but not everyone with disability got a special ability. So, Qadirun Bikhtilaf, Zawil Himam, Zawil Ihtiyagat Al Khasa, those terminologies are very generalized. Mustalahat Ta'amimiya Gidda doesn't give you the impression of disabled people and who is a disabled person, and also actually diminishing. So if Yasser is successful, I am diminishing his success because I'm basically saying he is successful because he is disabled, which is mm. not the case. He is successful. Or his success is special because he's disabled rather than he's just successful. Exactly. So now we are diminishing his success and we're looking back to it. So this is why we prefer personal disability. Then if I told you, Dr. Mahad Mustafa, coming to you at the AUC today, and Mustafa got a, visual, got a visual impairment. So you know that someone with visual impairment coming to you, so you tell the someone at the gate of the university, you may prepare the documents in Braille for him and so on and so forth. So if I told you, but if I told you that Mustafa is a person with a special needs coming to you, you don't know mm -hmm. anything about him. You don't know how to accommodate him. So it's about okay. accommodation. Terminology is useful when it comes to accommodation as well. So. This is why we are talking about the terminologies because also it reflects positively or negatively about how the community perceive us as people and how they view us as, um, as community as well. And do we have any questions about the terminologies or do we have any opposing opinions or comment about what term to be used? Because I had some people saying they have to choose the term that they have been to, to be called with and I agree, but definitely this is what they have chosen. And it's very sad when you attend a conference or maybe a workshop and non-disabled people say, I think that we have to call them as this and that. Like, mm. shut up, you shouldn't, because now we have, we have this terminal, this slogan of nothing about us without us. We have this approach of inclusion. We would like their affairs and voices to be heard. And therefore, they should express themselves at least with what terminology we should use to call them. Ariel, did you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah. Um... So if I understood correctly, like you, um, Mustafa, you, you prefer uh, person first language. Yeah. Am I getting exactly. did I get that? Okay. So then I'll just offer another perspective. Um, in the U in the US, um, a lot of disabled people prefer identity first language. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I think a lot of also the, you know, disability studies scholarship and everything that I'm coming from a U.S. perspective, huh? um, really prefer identity first language. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is, is that um, like if you if you refer to me, it, because often a disability really is the identity of the person. And so not to diminish that. And I think that that's where sometimes people are afraid to say one or the other because they don't know what people prefer, but it's kind of just like, um, like I said, like if you get it wrong, it's fine. You just change it. Um, but like I, I much prefer identity first language. If somebody called me like you are, I think I said this in our breakout room, you're suffering from autism spectrum disorder. I would be like, no, 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 I'm autistic. And there's a big difference, I think. Um, Maybe it's a cultural difference of the way. Yeah. It, it, I, mean, I mean, I I partly agree with you about the suffering because suffering is a negative word. We shouldn't use these negative words because these negative connotations always again bring the sympathy and stigma and the charity way of talking about disabled people, which you, we wouldn't have to. So we shouldn't use suffer. We should use a respect, irrespective. Um, and language. And I agree with you that disability is part of the identity. This is why I don't see a shame at all if you say, because we always have in a straight, this is why we need lots of awareness raising. 
please help him because he is and he doesn't want to say blind so he can sign just with his hand to my eye that this person is blind but he doesn't want to say because he feel like if he said I'm blind I will be sad I think I'm 40 years old and I know that I'm blind since birth so it's something that we that we live with and that we have and that we know and we must we must be able to disabled people shouldn't be that sensitive if they would like to be mainstreamed and included in their communities as well you know what i mean because otherwise people would be segregated because we don't we don't want to hurt them or hurt their feelings or so on mm. but I, they, I totally agree with the, with your point other thoughts about immunology it's an important point because it reflects how we perceive disability as well And, and I think the, the, the thing I'm seeing right here is like we have several people who have disabilities in the room who prefer to be called in different ways, right? And so like we were saying in the workshop, was it the day before yesterday, that not every blind person needs the same or wants the same accommodation or wants to be treated, you know, like everybody, not just because they have the same impairment, they want the same um, accommodation or they want to learn in the same way. Absolutely. Even if he got the same level of the impairment, he, he, he would use different accommodation. Some people lost their vision maybe when they are 15 or 16 years old and doesn't know how to write braille. So we have to accommodate treat them differently in accordance to what they need. This is why, and thank you for, um, for sharing that. This is why it's very important to apply here the participatory approach. Always ask people before, help them. Always ask disabled people of what they need before providing them with any uh, support. Because Do not decide that, oh, okay, Mustafa's blind, so I would give him this and that. You should ask them first because by asking them, you you would be able to um, to to support them with the way that they like. Any other um, questions or thoughts? Yes, um, Mustafa, I put the second question also in case people yes, want please. to jump to that the yes, exercise please. about. Um, discussing the contention of whether language use is a trivial question or because I feel like we're sort of doing that now, that it's yeah. beyond political correctness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So I don't know, I would love to hear people first, what, what people think of that question. I, I have a question and I apologize if you if you answer this and I was caught in the flurry of the, the great chat as well. Um, so if like I'm in a class where I'm talking to future teachers and I wholeheartedly agree, we should definitely use the terminology that, that the people within the different groups want to be referred to. But if I'm speaking generally and I'm not sure what student, you know, like for instance, disabled students versus students with disabilities, if I'm speaking generally, I'm trying to be inclusive and I don't want to also have my students have to raise their hand and say, I prefer disabled students if I'm just talking generally. Do you have any suggestions for that? Because I think it, it shifts so much for different students or for different groups of people to try to be as inclusive as possible in the language that I'm using, I guess is what I'm saying. So you're saying that we should be inclusive as possible. If that means you um, agree or disagree with the, the, the terminologies that we are discussing. Um, um, I, I somehow um, didn't get that. I, my understanding, uh, Amy, tell me if I'm wrong. My understanding is she's saying, if we know that uh, some people prefer one term and other people prefer another term, when we're just talking about not a particular person, but disability in general, do we say one or the other? And Stephen is saying in the chat, use both. So, I mean, yeah, I would say, I, I would actually acknowledge that some people prefer this, some people prefer that, and sometimes maybe switch between them, like sometimes say, so sometimes offend some people. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but I mean, um, as, as, I don't know why we do that, um, um, especially when it comes to disability rights, but we will not use, do that when it comes to other discussions. So, like, um, if, if, the, if the term agreed by the policy and by the conventions, who put by disabled people, like say that they are people, um, that they are people with disability and their disability comes of the community, why we always give people the impression that we will be willing to change it according to um, each and every person needs. I'm not dictatorial here, but rather thinking 
that in order to provide them with the necessary support, we have to have the term and we have to define because each country is some, somehow defining disabled people different than other countries. Some people, for example, adding people with psychological problems as part of this, people with depression, people with that, as part of disabled people. Some people, some countries not. And that decision is important because that decision is related to the budgets and how much we are given um, to disabled people in terms of rights. So that will expand the number of disabled people and therefore the budget um, offered to um, them as well. So uh, just the, the, the risk of deciding on many terminologies to be used to express the same group is that we will be confused and the meaning will be different and therefore maybe they will lose support at the end of the day. And this is the important thing that we need them to have. I don't know what do you think. Can people hear me? Yes, thank you, Mustafa. That was that was a helpful uh, exploration of my question. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I was just. Um, I mean, at the end, uh, trying to, um, as as I explained at the beginning, like. It's really um, encouraging to all of you to think of um, studying um, issues around uh, disability. We are having um, a little bit of a challenge when it comes to data, information, statistics, publications, um, uh, and articles that talks about um, um, disabled people rights, especially in the MENA region, especially maybe in Arabic. And uh, we still have miles to go to link between disability and many recent topics such as the climate change, such as disaster risk reduction, such as loads of new issues uh, like pandemics and epidemics, and to understand where, this, where are disabled people from these issues and the difficulties that they are, um, they are facing. And actually the last, um, the, the, the situation of COVID-19 show us really that the governments have to do a lot to mainstream disabled people affairs. Two thirds of people who died in the UK are, uh, because of COVID-19 are disabled people, two thirds of them. And that, that's shocking because that means how they are disprioritized to access medical services than other people. Um, um, in many countries, they are not even counted as part of the disability statistics. Um, we, we, we have loads and loads of issues when it comes to considering their affairs into, into policies. Recently, we have lots of shining policies talking about their demands, but we still have, uh, we still have miles, uh, miles to, to go. And despite the difficulties of inclusion, I mean, me and all other people who are working in the field still in favor of inclusion as a concept, because this is the only way, it's not an option um, to, this is the only way to ensure that they are mainstreamed in education, receiving health services, um, being able to work and definitely adding a lot to the economy of their communities. Um, if we consider many issues like um, tourism, for example, consider inclusive tourism, that mean we would be able to bring lots of disabled people to the uh, tourist um, um, tourist environment. So we would we would add lots of economy if we consider accessibility in each and every aspect of community. Uh, I mean, I, I do apologize if I'm not following the slides as I should be. Um, like normally when I'm when I'm trying to present about disabilities, always maybe get more passionate than I should be. So jumping a little bit um, around um, the topic and the time is a bit short. I'm trying to go through the development of different models and approaches used by disability, also to speak about disabled people and terminologies and approaches, um, uh, the participatory approaches and so on. So I'm sorry, Dr. Maha, if um, I confused you a bit no, with the slides. No, no, thank you so much. And, uh, um, we and, and the I hope, I hope is, that- is great, it's more important. And I think a lot of the people in the room have some uh, interest at least in this. So the discussion has been I, I hope it's not boring. I hope it's not boring for no, them. No, of course not. No, but the discussion right. is more important than the slides, I think. In this yeah, case. I'm happy to uh, now. Um, thank you very much. I'm happy to receive either questions, thoughts, maybe specific topics that people would like to discuss later, or um, maybe resources that people would like me to send so I can send later on. 
and and we at the end i think we have a slide of uh, some resources for people uh, to be able to to read as well so uh, please go ahead I'm, I'm listening now to any questions so first i just want to note that alia does this beautiful thing that i think we should hire her in my fest that she creates a Google Doc. I think it's a study technique, but she does it in conferences too. <laughs> she creates a Google uh, Doc of all the resources that have been shared today by different people. Uh, so instead of uh, saving the chat, she organizes it. So it's a little bit, uh, it's useful. So thank you so much, Alia, for always doing this. Uh, I wish you were my TA and a student in every class of mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you, Maha, my pleasure. I just <laughs> love doing this, to be honest. It makes me feel more organized and I feel there is something Always to give to others as well. Keep them, keep them all and like send them. Lots of good people like you studying disability studies, please, Alia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mustafa. Can you please, can you please, if, if they're all in the same Google folder in your computer, could you please send them to Laura Gibbs via Slack or somewhere uh, so that we can curate them in the MyFest curation so other people can. I was find going them to there. do just that. I was going to wait till the very end of MyFest so I can, you know, attend as many sessions as possible. And then share the link to all the sessions I have attended and compile the resources of. Great, thank you. No worries. All right. Okay. So, does anyone else have uh, questions or comments for Mustafa? I had a question a while ago, but I forgot it. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, do you have uh, reflections or? Um things that you feel that uh, we should have expanded on as well. I mean, I didn't want to speak about um, accessibility at all, considering uh, that you already covered it, but it's, uh, it's definitely a very essential aspect if we would like to have a successful um, inclusion as well. So oh, let me know I if- just, uh, I just wanted us to look over the print where people are getting lots of confusion just to call disabled people or people with disabilities or like those specific two terms make yeah. people very confused like they say shall i shall i say disabled people or people it's a school it's it's different schools actually um, it's actually uk and us you know schools so usa always uh, using uh, using persons with disabilities and this is the language of the, the convention and the language of the sdgs as well so I think you should stick with that. You can stick with that um, people with disability. But in UK, they just say disabled people because they, they are disabled, but this at the same community. And if you look at the, say, these two terms, it's fine to use either, but they are um, in, a, in a higher level rather than using those like special needs or their Qudrat al-Khassa or their Al-Himam and so on and so forth, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you say you're saying this, but earlier you were talking about impairment versus disability, and I think that was really important because exactly. the impairment is the physical uh, difference, that and then the disability is how the society is constructed in ways that then make this person not able to do certain things. If, if you ask me about one thing that people have to leave this session with, that with, with it would be this: it would be the differentiation between impairment, which lies inside the person, and disability, which is a community barrier that we, we work at uh, to, to, to remove so people's disabilities could be removed. We have to understand that, that the, the person impairment doesn't mean the person's disability. They are different. And this is, this is the, yani, the core factor of the issue. And this is why we have a social model of disability, uh, which is different than the medical slash individual. Because in the individual model, we, don't, we do not differentiate between impairment and disability. We look at both of them as one thing, but this is not the case at the social model of disability. Thanks for raising this as well. Okay, any other comments or questions? People are saying thank you in the chat, for the chat and for you Mustafa, of course. Uh, and they're making plans to do another session for sharing resources directly about, you know, teaching about this or teaching this. Yeah, definitely. We can also want uh, next time, maybe if you like, we, we would love to discuss more about services and how we all of us have the right to access services and specialized support and the twin track approach. Definitely, as I said, it's a science with lots of we just today touched upon um, things quickly, but um, more, I'm sure more will come. 
Chicago. Okay, we have two more minutes. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn off the recording in case someone wants to say something off the record.